Hello, so for this video, I am going to go over the polarity and intermolecular forces gizmos. Um, we'll be going over this section here, or this entire document, specifically sections A and B. For my students, section C is optional for this school year. So in this situation, we are basically seeing how electrons are flowing inside of molecules. So in this case, we're going to create a molecule out of sodium and chlorine. We show our valence electrons and we click play and we notice that our electron transfers to chlorine from sodium and our cloud for chlorine gets a lot larger while sodiums get smaller okay so we have an analogy here with the bully tugging on a rope against a little child so overall the bully is stronger so he gets the electron or this ball now if we have two kids tugging on the same ball that have the same strength then the ball goes nowhere and they share the ball that is similar to some of our bonding that we'll be seeing pretty soon. And those are analogies that we need to use. All right, so in this situation here, we are just observing sodium and chlorine. So we need to show electronegativity, show our valence electrons, and we're gonna reset. So the questions are asking us to hit play and explain what we notice. We also have to see where sodium's one valence electron goes. And if you notice, we click play. Chlorine takes a valence electron, so go ahead and describe that. So now notice these colors right here, okay? So the colors refer to this charge right here. So notice now we have a charge assigned to our atoms. Chlorine became red while sodium became blue, making it more positive. Well, sodium became blue and more positive, chlorine became more negative. All right. So now we're going to expand on this, but for this next section, we're going to click on pol show polar molecule, molecule inset and show nonpolar molecule inset. So in this case, let's go ahead and reset this. Let's show the insets. And we show now a distribution of electrons in these two uh, images. So these electrons are free flowing, but they have a certain path that they take. If you notice with the polar bond, it does not look the same as a nonpolar bond. So you're just describing these differences here. And the key thing is, is that we have a charge being formed for the polar bond because of the unequal distribution of electron dots. All right, so that's why we have a red section here, which is now more negative, and a blue section here, which is more positive. And it is positive because there are fewer electrons here compared to the number of protons in this atom. In this situation here, we have no charge because everything's distributed evenly. So that's all you're writing out for this section here. So now you're still comparing this, and now we show sodium and chlorine. So let's get rid of this real quick. We click play, and notice this creation, this molecule created from sodium and chlorine, looks a lot more like a polar bond than a nonpolar band bond. And the reason being is that there's an unequal distribution of electrons. And you wanna try this combination out with other metals and non-metal combinations, just to get an idea of what's going on. Then you're going to form some ionic bonds between metals and non-metals. If you forgot what a metal and a non-metal is, go to ptable.com, click here, or hover over this section, and notice we have our metals highlighted all the way from lithium here to polonium. All right, but for this case, we only care about a few metals. For instance, we have sodium, calcium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. And your non-metals are these items that are highlighted now. All right, so you go ahead and form your bonds and explain what you notice. And now in this section here, you're going over electronegativity. So electronegativity, Beforehand, we used to see it with our ptable.com. Here it is. Notice how electronegativity increases to the top right and it decreases to the bottom left. In this case, fluorine will attract electrons and francium will lose electrons. So anyways, in your case, you're just clicking right here, show electronegativity, and then you reset, you click play, and that's it. So in this case, we're going to start categorizing our elements or our molecules created 
as an ionic bond, a polar covalent bond, or a nonpolar covalent bond. So in this situation, the electronegative the electronegativity difference for sodium and chlorine is 2.1. So since it is greater than 1.6, we place it here. Notice it is correct. We place it down here, it's not correct, and here it is not correct either. So anyways, that's pretty much what you're doing for this section down here. You're trying to create the most number of molecules, all the molecules you can with all of these elements here. So for instance, we get sodium again. Our only other option is oxygen, so I drag and drop it here. I click play just to watch it. And notice the electronegativity difference is 2.6, which is greater than 1.67. So in that case, we want to drag this here. It is correct. It is incorrect here, and it is incorrect here. And notice we got rid of sodium, so go ahead and try to make all the combinations you can with these elements here. So for part B, we are now determining the polarity of a molecule. In our class, we previously have done this already. We drew these elements out and the molecules to determine the polarity. But in this case, we're going to start seeing it based on this diagram here. So notice I was asked to drag water to this field. I turn on my electric field, show valence electrons. If we want to, we don't really need this. But in this case, there are a few things to notice. We have a positive region in our molecule, which is blue, and the red region is negative. So our positive section will want to go towards the negative portion of the electric field, and the positive or the negative portion of, the, of our molecule wants to go to the positive side of the electric field. So now we reverse the field and notice our molecule shifts. This is what's going on with a polar molecule. Now for a nonpolar molecule, for instance, like CH4, we turn on our electric field, we reverse the field, and nothing happens. This is because our molecule is nonpolar. Notice how there's an equal distribution of molecules here. So let's put this here, nonpolar.